Introducing Earth's first personal robocar made by Tensor. Unlike Tesla, Tensor uses many more advanced sensors and lots of computing power. You'll see, unlike Waymo, its autonomous vehicle is designed from the ground up for personal use, not a retrofitted conventional car. Of course, we should all be skeptical about the claims of this little known startup, but now that they've revealed themselves, let's go over their approach to autonomy and how they'll say they'll go to market. Let's start with what we know of this company. Based in San Jose, California, Tensor came out of their stealth mode to reveal their robocar. On LinkedIn, there are about 50 people with profiles coming from a wide variety of tech companies. Here's their executive team, and I'm just saying, their chief safety officer kind of looks like Hank from Breaking Bad in this picture, and Hank knows a thing or two about automotive safety. The company actually dates back to 2016 when it began autonomous development under the name Auto X. They have a permit in California to test its level four autonomous vehicles on public roads with no safety driver. SAE level four means the vehicle can operate without a driver, but there are limits to its operational design domain or ODD limited to certain roads, weather conditions, or not allowed in construction zones or certain times of day. Waymo is also level four. In their reporting to the state, they acknowledge the name change to Tensor Auto Inc., formerly known as Auto X Technologies Inc. Auto X Technologies was one of those AV companies straddling the line between Silicon Valley and Shenzhen, China. We Ride and Neo find themselves in the same situation. Prior to 2020, it was manageable working both sides of the Pacific. But after the Biden administration announced a ban on autonomous and connected vehicle technology coming from China, and the Trump administration doesn't want anything coming from China, these companies need to make some tough decisions. AutoX shut down their robo-taxi fleet in China last year, and their U.S. operations are now tensor. Tesla, as we all know, uses a relatively simple sensor suite, relying on cameras to provide the input for autonomous driving that removed the radar sensor a few years ago. Waymo and others use a wide array of sensors, cameras, yes, but also LiDAR, which gets all the attention. But don't forget about the radar sensors. Radar provides a very good complement to cameras. Let's break down Tensor. And, you know, fine, we'll start with the LiDAR sensor, and I like to spell LiDAR this way. On top is their 360-degree Tensor Halo Hyper LiDAR. Marketing BS, right? Uh, no, they claim it shoots 25.6 million beams per second. You know, well, it's time to do some math to make that claim out. Last year, I took a ride with May Mobility, and they use a 128-beam LiDAR on top. According to its manufacturer, it fires its lasers, you know, pew, pew, 18,500 times per second. So multiply the two, and you get about 2.4 million beams per second. So Tensor's LiDAR is 10 times more than that, using silicon from AMS Osram. They're an Austrian-based company and Hamatsu Photonics, a Japanese company. They claim it detects objects a thousand feet away from the autonomous vehicle. Tensor also has four smaller LiDAR sensors to fill in areas closer to the autonomous vehicle. They call this their Sentinel Blind Spot LiDAR. This is the same strategy that other companies use. Here too, Tensor claims that they're more advanced, able to see straight down and with two and a half times higher resolution than other vehicles. Let's talk about the camera. Tesla Hardware 4 uses eight exterior cameras. Each one's about five megapixels each. That's a step up from Tesla Hardware 3, but cars in China often mention cameras in the eight megapixel range or greater, some also featuring anti-glare technology on the lens to help deal with sun flare. So what does Tensor use? Of course, 27 megapixel cameras and more of them, 17 high definition cameras and 37 cameras throughout the vehicle. But you know, who's counting? They deploy a variety of technologies to keep those cameras clean and able to see, from self-cleaning little mini wipers and retractable nozzles to ultra high pressure pumps and anti-fogging heating. 
You see wipers and jets used on other autonomous vehicles. I personally love the idea of someday having to replace a tiny little mini windshield wiper on your vehicle. Tesla has yet to put into production self-cleaning technologies like this other than the front camera on the Cybertruck in case you actually take it off-road. That's something they need to work on. If you really want the vehicle to drive autonomously, it can't just come to a stop every time some mud or rain gets on the lens. It has six hyper radars. These are 4D radar units, which adds a vertical elevation to the range, azimuth, and velocity measurements. So that measures how close the vehicle is coming or going away from you. It also has 10 ultrasonic sensors for object detection when parking at low speed, plus 16 mechanical collision sensors if you do happen to bump something. It does utilize high definition digital map. However, they say if the map is outdated or unavailable, the system is capable of autonomously driving on roads without it. So the hyper LiDAR, blind spot LiDARs, hyper radars, extreme megapixel cameras, there are over a hundred sensors and it has to dump all that data somewhere to process. Systems like BYD's God's Eye or D-Pilot system have different version. The camera only system has a hundred tops of processing. That's trillions of operations per second. Add one LiDAR and that goes up to 300 tops. Add multiple LiDAR and it gets 600 tops of processing. How about Tensor? Eight thousand tops <laughs> you know like chinese evs with the smartest of smart driving assistants they like to use nvidia thor processors sometimes two of them for redundancy tensor thinks that's cute using eight nvidia drive agx thor processors they spat out even more details on their website simply put tesla's camera based fsd approach uses much fewer and much simpler sensors and processing some Chinese EVs have more powerful sensors and processing, but none of them, none of them come even close to what Tensor uses. Waymo doesn't release specs for its self-driving kit, but it's probably the only thing on the road right now that matches it for hardware. The system learns from expert human drivers using high quality sensor data and imitation learning. Rather than just following a single path, it generates multiple driving options, each with a confidence score, and then selects the safest, smoothest route. Some other companies are doing this too, a multi-path decision. It uses transformer neural networks, you know, ChatGPT, Tesla, to analyze and predict real-time interactions between vehicles, cyclists, and pedestrians. The hardware includes external microphones to listen for things like sirens from an emergency vehicle. I know Waymo and Zooks do this too. It has what they call car emoji displays on the outside. It can be used to communicate with pedestrians, letting them know it's okay to cross in front of the vehicle, even though there's no driver behind the wheel to wave them on. And all this comes with a car, so let's talk about it. You're probably already skeptical. I don't blame you. This is a highly advanced vehicle, maybe too advanced, you know, but they say it's coming. And please don't stop the video. They say it's coming in late 2026. Yeah, I, I know. Given all the, the turmoil and the tariffs and technology changes in the auto industry, that seems impossible. So, you know, let's just enjoy their vision for a personal robocar and see if it makes sense. It's an electric vehicle with a drag coefficient of 0.253, not as good as other EVs, but you know, given that big old sensor pod on top and all over the vehicle, it's kind of understandable. The profile of the car reminds me of the Toyota Prius, which sounds like an insult, but you know, the new Prius is kind of a hot nerd. Size-wise, however, it's huge, close in size to the BMW i7 or Neo ET7, it's an executive sedan capable of chauffeuring the owner autonomously, whether they choose to sit in the front where the driver would normally sit or lounging in the rear. It features coach doors, so the back doors have a reverse hinge. It still has a permanent B pillar, so I'm not sure why the coach doors are there. It doesn't provide a completely open entry. Doors for charging are both on the left rear like Tesla and the right rear. You sometimes see this on premium Chinese EVs. Sometimes the AC port is on one side while the DC fast charging port is on the other. Or it could be to accommodate dual simultaneously charging for faster speeds. You see that on a couple of other Chinese vehicles. 
From the images, it appears to be a single motor rear wheel drive. They did not confirm this. And you know, I would expect a dual motor version to be available, but from the images, they don't show it. It's an 800 volt architecture, 845 to be exact, 112 kilowatt hour battery. So 300 plus miles of range should be pretty easy. Although all that processing is gonna suck energy from that battery. 20 to 80% in just 10 minutes, they claim. That's fantastic. 5C charging, 400 kilowatt average charging is what they state. So it'll peak higher than that. The chart that they have on their website shows it charging at 650 amps or better times 800 volts or more. And this thing could peak well over 500 kilowatts. Now, China has hardware that powerful, but in the US, we currently do not. If we ever do get it, this EV can handle it. It's an AI powered air suspension. Now, that does not sound like a fully active suspension like the clear motion system that Neo offers. It features four wheel steer by wire like the Cybertruck. For reasons you'll see on the inside, that's important plus brake by wire, both of which make it easier for the autonomous system to activate since it's all electronically controlled. The steer by wire allows for a foldable steering wheel when the human driver decides to let the autonomous system do the driving. We've seen this in concept cars before. With the steering wheel out of the way, the pedals will fold up for extra leg room and the center display can slide over for you to watch movies or take a meeting. The vehicle shown had camera-based rear and side view mirrors. That eliminates the traditional mirrors on each side of the car, which adds to the drag. They state that this would be offered in areas that it's allowed by law, and currently the US does not allow that. However, the government has been looking at it for years, so maybe they finally make a decision on it. Tensor is working with VinFast to build this vehicle in Vietnam for sale in the US, Europe, and Middle East. You know, honestly, I could absolutely see this bonkers autonomous vehicle fitting very well into Dubai. Since the vehicle can drive itself, all the seats fold ridiculously flat, including three different configurations for the big bed. If you don't want passengers smoking in the vehicle, there's a smoke detector, or it can be used to alert sleeping riders of a fire. Like many laptops, there are physical covers on the interior cameras for privacy. You can physically turn off the interior microphone for privacy. Wow, there must be some wild stuff happening on that big bed. Palm ID, face ID. You can give it commands from outside the vehicle or in. AI and Gentic to do more than just respond to your commands, but to be proactive. Very few buttons on the inside end-to-end -end encryption between the vehicle and your phone. <laughs> I'm literally running out of energy talking about this autonomous vehicle. So maybe this is a good time to summarize the Tensor Robocar. It's like a wild concept car at a Chinese auto show, totally out of this world. The AV technology is hyper-powered. The EV technology is very good. And the AI technology is exceptional. Is this a real car or just an AI hallucination? For sure, it's an ambitious vehicle and it's not gonna be easy, but it will be interesting to watch this company try.